Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here for round three of the Pokemon 2020 Malmo Regional Championships. I'm joined by Costa here, uh, coming in a new face behind the desk and we are so happy uh, to have you here, Costa. And congratulations on getting through your first round. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, it was a bit, it was a bit tough. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tried working around it, but you know, hopefully, I haven't damaged people's minds a bit too much. But absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, I did see uh, a little bit of the stream game from the last round, and it looked yes. like you had some really interesting teams to cast cast in front of. No, definitely did. I mean, it was a really strong showing, both from Miguel and Brandon's side. Um, it was, I think, one of those sets that really could go either way because it was just both team compositions as well and the fact of the adaptations from both sides. They were really able to see their strengths and we weaknesses, sorry, um, depending on how pe uh, the uh, opponent played because we did see the reveal, just like Miguel was uh, saying now in the uh, post-match interview. Um, the Thunderfang reveal with Max Lightning <laughs> yeah. was something else. It, uh, it absolutely. really, really was yeah. because it's able to neutralize the hypnosis strategy as well whilst dealing immense damage, especially on Milotic, somehow surviving on 2 HP, which I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And it survived on 2 HP in yeah. two games in a row. I so, yeah, uh, yeah I mean. brilliantly trained there from that Milotic. Definitely. And it's these kind of strategies that you see coming in from these players, um, you know, picking those slightly maybe sideline picks on the moves that they uh, moves that they choose. Uh, Pokemon in VGC and yep. Pokemon in general are only able to have four moves out of all of the moves that they can learn and they can they can learn quite a few can't quite they a few especially. Um, but the combination of those things you know you see a, a, you've got your Milotic you're out against a Durant and Durant's not really known for being able to do too much damage to Milotic and especially if Milotic is able to survive the big powerhouse moves like Max Flutterby coming out yes. you know it can get that competitive boost and exactly. Durant isn't really comfortable sitting in front of those sort of things is it? I think it's a really good strategy uh, like really good technical move coverage to have on Durant that people really don't expect and it could do a lot of damage especially if you have like uh, we could have even seen from Brandon's side a helping hand partner right by its side being able to actually pick up the KO negate the intimidate completely from uh, Miguel's side because he did opt to bring it and I think that was a very strong survival point uh, key to the Milotic because I mean it, it seems like he's done his calps his calculations in anticipation of yeah. what his Pokemon can take and cannot withstand so it's really it, exactly that and all of these trainers they have to go through you know a lot of preparation to make sure that they're ready for the tournament don't let that put you off though you know no. you can you can make much more simple teams but when you get to this higher level and Brandon and Miguel are both players that have been playing a long time. Yes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of experience on the field there. But we're going to go straight into our first player. We've got Nicole Said from... Uh, I've just totally, I've totally lost the flag there. I've totally lost the flag there. I do believe that's uh, Sweden. Sweden, yeah. So Of where we are at. Absolutely, ben. yeah. I'm sorry, guys. That's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely uh, lost that chain of thought there. It's no problem at all. Yes, so we do see Nicole Said uh, coming from Sweden, and um, she's actually a really strong, consistent player. Um, uh, we've seen mo most recently um, uh, in 2018, she did accomplish uh, Malmo Regionals Top 8, as well as Frankfurt Regionals Top 8 within the same year. And we have actually seen her quite consistently at uh, going quite well, but not quite reaching that top cut in more recent events, such as, for example, um, uh, Bottom uh, much earlier on this year. Indeed, but we do see her, you know, coming out strong in this tournament. Definitely. And I if you want to get to that top cut finish, this is the way to start. 2-0 coming into this uh, yes. tournament, going into round three. So we'll see how Nicole uh, handles this game. Uh, we've got our next player coming up in a moment, I'm sure. Yes. And that is going to be the one and only <laughs> Jamie Boyd. Mr. Jamie Boyd, yes. Um, but quite notably, I do want to point out that lovely last Pokemon on Nicole's side, Gudra. Of course, we do see uh, Nicole uh, running the Gothitelle, Tyranitar, the Arcanine, Corviknight, Gastrodon, and the <laughs> Gudra, to be honest, because I don't think many people are realizing how much of a good Pokemon Gudra is, especially in this format, with the Dynamax potential, because it's a really specially defensive uh, tank, to be honest, whilst being able to do a lot of damage potential whilst getting, for example, Sludge Bomb Max oozes off. So it's a really good, interesting option that um, Nicole's actually gone for, which fair play to her. 
Yeah, indeed. And, you know, you've got to you've got to pick the Pokemon that have the most strengths for your team and what yeah. you want to achieve. And when you see a, a Gudra paired with something like Goffitel, especially with Gudra having such high specially defensive stats and, you know, it's not faint of heart either. It does it is able to do a lot of damage, Definitely. especially with all those Dynamax moves. And it gets lots of different coverage options. So lots of different Dynamax moves to choose from if if Nicole wants to be going for that. But also, you can use Goffitel to stop your opponent switching. Make sure that Gudra is in against those specially trained Pokemon yes. so that it's not taking nearly as much damage and Nicole can just uh, whittle down those Pokemon and, and go for the win. But here we have him, Jamie Boy, as we said before, yes. also 2-0, and oh, and you can see a list of accomplishments down there. I mean, uh, it's probably a bigger list than that, to be honest, but I don't <laughs> think we're going to be able to fit it in the um, display. But um, we do actually see uh, Jamie Boy bringing that Charizard, Tintelda, Gengar, Rotom, Mo, Grimmsnarl, and Inteleon. Indeed, and Inteleon is something that we saw quite a bit. We saw it in Balkan, and we yes. had, a, in fact, I think it was round three or four that we had two Inteleons facing off in the same <laughs> round. I think we had a, another one uh, popping up a couple of rounds later. Yeah. So something that's picked up quite a lot of popularity, and, and certainly, uh, you know, back in the day, you didn't used to see too many uh, of your... Um, starter, starter Pokemon, Pokemon yes. coming into the format. But these days, Pokemon like Incineroar, which Ooh. we've seen so much of over the years, yeah. and now Inteleon picking up the reins and gaining popularity as a really strong Pokemon that has lots of great options and access to that max airstream. Exactly. Um, uh, I believe that is off of Air Slash. And um, it can increase, choose to increase its uh, speed and its partner's speed, of course, by one. But most notably, I do believe it's... Uh, Natural speed uh, tiering in this current format is quite high. I do mm. believe it, um, it reach it just under speeds. Uh, under speeds actually drag bolts. But um, other than that, it just needs to have the right support against it. But it no uh, once again, most notably, has snipe shot as its signature move. Snipe shot. What does it do? It actually doesn't care about redirection to mm. be honest yep. uh, whichever slot uh, you so choose to click into it will hit there even if there's a dashodon with storm drain on your opponent's side as long as you know you don't target into it to be honest absolutely absolutely so here we're going straight into team preview uh, we've got nicole on the left hand side of your team and yep. jamie on the right hand side of the team and we're just going to go for a quick recap of the team we've got Goffitel, Tyranitar, Arcanine, Corviknight, Gastrodon, and Gudra for Nicole. And on Jamie's side of the field, we've got Charizard, Kinkelda, Gengar, Grimmsnarl, Inteleon, and that Moform Rotom. Yes, I mean, it's a very interesting matchup, I believe, uh, for both of the players. Um, there are multiple options <laughs> and modes, to be honest, that each uh, player can opt for. So I'm not actually sure which one they believe is the strongest for their own person. Well, you've got... E e he, Goffitel is one of those Pokemon that could be setting up Trick Room. Very We've seen true. that before in some some dedicated teams. And at the Bokken Regional Championships, yes. that made an absolute crash into the tournament. We oh, saw yeah. quite a few teams with it in the top cut. Uh, so it may be that Nicole's opting for a more Trick Room orientated side of, the, uh, side of play. But that Corviknight also has access to Tailwind. And equally, on Jamie's side of the field, you've got two Pokemon that have access to Max Airstream. You've got Grimmsnarl, which we've seen quite a lot using that Thunder Wave. Yes. So speed is going to be a really important factor in this game, especially where both players have such bulky Pokemon. They want to be going first. And we'll see, going into turn one, who is going to start going first first? No, <laughs> that's, that's, I, I love what you did there. Um, definitely, definitely agreed. Um, we do actually see a, the Grimmsnarl Gengar coming out from Jamie's side and the Gothitelle Gudra lead coming out from Nicole's side. Yeah, and that Gengar is going to be immediately putting a lot of pressure on that Gothitelle. Big Shadow Balls potentially coming out there or Max Phantasms if Jamie decides to go for the uh, Dynamax on the Gengar slot. You've got Grimmsnarl on Jamie's side of the field, could also go for a fake out there. So Nicole's going to have to watch out for that going into this turn. Oh, no, definitely that. But we do believe, uh, I do believe that we see a Dynamax coming straight off in turn one from Gengar on Jamie's side. Um, uh, he could potentially be going for the Max Phantasm, as you did mention, into the Gothel, maybe trying to neutralize it straight off the bat and try to get rid of its uh, very um, 
uh, very good ability of Shadow Tide being able to uh, capture and restrain the Grim Snarl into the field, but not the Danger because the Danger is a ghost type. And we do actually see the Dynamax come straight up from Nicole's side as well onto the Drudra. So, I mean, right now there are multiple different things that could happen. We could see a Grim Snarl maybe go for a Fake Tears, uh, hoping not to get faked out. But we actually see the Gothitelle come out with a Fake Out into the Grim Snarl. And the Max Phantasm coming out from Gengar into the Gothitelle. Mm. Does it pick up the KO? Ooh. Ooh, it actually doesn't. It survives on 1 HP. Is that a Focus Sash? That, that is, is a Focus that Sash. That is a Focus Sash. So no wonder. It actually really planned out that lead um, uh, from uh, Nicole's side. It does reduce the defense on both Gudra and Gothitelle. Doesn't matter as much on Gothitelle. We do see a Max Ooze coming out from Gudra into the Grimmsnarl, being able to take it below half of its HP whilst increasing the special attack of both Gothitelle and Gudra. And this is the thing where we, we see in turn one, both players have got off to quite an explosive start. They've both Dynamax turn one. Yep. Uh, Jamie's decided to bring that Gothitelle down to its sash, try to remove Shadow Tag, as you were saying, from, uh, from the field. Uh, it turns out that Gothitelle, though, not going to want to take any more damage, going to no. remain on 1 HP and switch out for Tyranitar. So Tyranitar does switch in, does get up the Sandstream. It's a Sandstorm, so it will be having that plus uh, one point, uh, that uh, increased special defense uh, from its end. We do see a Max Phantasm coming out in hope of taking out the Gothitelle um, from the Dangdar into the Tyranitar, uh, being able to reduce its defense by one, as well as the Drudras as well. And we see a Max Ooze once again coming out from the Drudras side, being able to finally get rid of the Grimmsnarl from the field, whilst also increasing its special attack. It's right now at plus two special attack. Dynamax, you really do not want to be going up against that. You don't indeed, but what Jamie's doing at the moment is while uh, the Tyranitar was able to switch in, take that Max Phantasm really well, Jamie does have access to that Kinkelda in the back and it may be that using those defense drops from Man Max Phantasm is going to be absolutely crucial to Jamie's game plan. And while Nicole is putting on so much pressure with that Gudra, likely a special attacker itself, and taking advantage of that Max Ooze, Tyranitar has been known in the past to run some special attacks, so maybe there's a little bit of synergy going on there, and Nicole trying to set up both the Gudra and the Tyranitar for doing a lot of damage going forwards. Uh, we do actually see Rotom Mo coming into the field now, um, going to be putting some pressure on that Tyranitar, some opting for using Will-O-Wisp as yes. an attacking option. So even if the Tyranitar was a physical attacker, uh, Jamie may have an option to just neuter it, make sure that Tyranitar um, isn't going to be doing so much damage to the Gengar, which is quite weak to crunches and other, other attacks that Tyranitar has to offer. So Nicole, does have that max ooze it is at two plus so the the rotom on jamie's side of the field is under threat and yes. jamie's got to be able to preserve that while also preserving his gengar at the same time so uh, this turns on a bit of a knife edge it is it really really is i i think it's exactly like you've been uh, mentioning right now we actually do see a max ooze coming up from the gengar um increasing its special attack and the rotom most special attack it does attack into the gudra being able to get some chip damage uh maybe not as much as you know you <laughs> would hope but it does more importantly get this special attack boost and we see a leaf storm coming out onto the rotom in hope it will be able Ooh. to deal a lot of damage it does but it doesn't actually take out the ty tyranitar um uh, obviously it does reduce its special attack by two but we do see a weakness policy being procked because of that leaf storm onto the T uh, Tyranitar and a Max Wormwind coming out from the Drudra into the Rotom being able to absolutely get the one hit KO onto Rotom Mo uh, because I mean it was specially boosted wasn't it by two. So it was indeed and a really good choice there for Nicole as Rock Slide comes in doesn't quite manage to finish the job on Gengar and Gengar taking a little more damage from the Sandstorm as well as Gudra. It uh, looked like that sun Sandstorm on Gudra may have done <laughs> just about as much as the Max Ooze coming out so. from, uh, from Gengar there uh, but a great turn from Nicole going for Max Wormwind just in case Jamie decides to bring in that Kinkelda uh, deciding that two plus attack is enough exactly. you know and sometimes in VGC you've got to toss up between whether you go for you know keep on boosting keep on boosting mm -hmm. or whether you decide to maybe stop your opponent from doing too much damage and especially with that Gudra at two minus stages of defense a really good play there from Nicole identifying that actually you know that Gudra is now under threat going back into its normal form yes. losing that HP boost that it gets from its Dynamax form um, and going to be under threat now 
uh, even to the point of switching out. But actually, with that thought in mind, um, <laughs> because it was at minus two defense, I do believe that Nicole did have the insight of saying, listen, I do not want to expose this Guja to potentially a KO. Does swap it out for the Arcanine. And we do see a Protect coming out from the Tyranitar. And we see Sludge Bomb into the Arcanine slot in hope of being able to chip away some damage, potentially even get a poison as well. Because, I mean, it does have uh, a chance to actually poison too. We do see the Conkelda not uh, completely ignoring the Tyranitar and going straight into the Druja slot, which does uh, hit the Arcanine, taking it down to 20 HP. And we don't... Did we see a Citrus Berry, I believe? Uh, we no? did. We saw yeah. we saw a berry activating on the Arcanine, and uh, looking at the HP remaining, looks yes. like it was a Citrus Berry coming out there. A great turn there for Jamie, correctly predicting that the Tyranitar was under threat, yes. didn't want to take any damage, so went for the Protect. And Jamie absolutely capitalized that with the Sludge Bomb that was coming out from uh, the Gengar, yep. one plus one special attack from that Max Ooze earlier in the game, uh, as well as the Drain Punch coming out on Conkelda, making sure that even if... Uh, J Nicole was to go for an attack maybe he was able to recover off all of that damage and now the guts uh, boosted well, Guts Boost is going to be on that Conkeldor very yes. likely uh, after the Flame Orb activating and getting that burn on the Conkeldor. So a big threat for Nicole uh, going into the next few turns uh, Gengar is naturally the most fast Pokemon on the field, and Mac Punch coming out is the other thing that exactly. makes Jamie's side of the field a bit faster. So, Conkelda being able to have access to the Mac Punch priority, being able to get rid of the Tyranitar during that turn, and just like you said, Ben, um, Gengar did have the speed advantage and was able to pick off the Arcanine with its Sludge Bomb, uh, getting a bit of chip damage there from the sand and a bit more for the Conkelda from the burn, but right now we are looking at a two versus two and Jamie actually starting to bring this back, to be honest. Well, he is, and, and it looks like we're going to see the uh, Sandstorm playing quite a big uh, part of this next turn. Uh, Goffitel is only on one HP, exactly. uh, not known for having too many recovery options, can carry the move rest, but isn't known to use it very often. So likelihood is that this, even though this uh, sand is in, in effect, actually looking at the counter there, uh, going to be ending at the end of this turn. So yeah. uh, Jamie does have to actually focus down the Goffitel, can't just maybe double protect and wait for the sand to finish the job for him uh, and just wait for that Gudra to be able to be uh, targeted individually. So a great position there for Nicole bringing the uh, Goffitel in at this stage of the this stage of the game does also have the option to go for a fake out exactly, as well so yeah. you know that Conkeldor may not be attacking this turn um, and it could be that uh, the KO comes out onto the Gengar but which no is fake out no fake out and we do actually see the Gengar being able to pick off that KO onto the Doctor with its sludge bomb and in retaliation we do see the Gudra unleash a thrower of flames in the form <laughs> of flamethrower into the Gengar, being able to take it out, and an ice punch coming out from the Kinkelda, being able to take down the Gudra to some very, very minimal HP, and it could actually take the game, I believe, because it does have access to Mac Punch. Yeah, indeed. It doesn't matter that Gudra is naturally faster than Kinkelda. Yes. Uh, going to be Mac Punch there, finishing off the game, and the first game of round three goes to Jamie Boyd. Wow. What a game. I mean, I, I think Jamie was really able to pull it back. I do believe that in the beginning of game one, it was looking like Nicole was setting up her Gruja, right? Mm. She was being able to say, listen, I'm going to start setting up my Gruja. You're not going to be able to take it out. And at some point, I will be able to wear down your Pokemon with my Gruja because I'm getting the special attack boost from both my Pokemon. I'm going to try to corner you in with a Dothetel Shadow Tag. Um, but Jamie accurately seeing his, uh, like the board position to what it was mm. and thinking, okay, look, I need to try to get rid of the Dothetel. I need to try to limit what Gudra can do. Henceforth, why I'm going to try to get some Max Phantasms off, yep. be yep. able to try to struggle it and force it into the position where it does have reduced um, defensive, um, uh, physically defensive stats. And Contelda, just like you had mentioned earlier, being able to ki uh, come in, exert that physical dominance of being able to potentially take out um, the Gudra, to be honest. Exactly, and you know, you get this, uh, you get this stage in the game where if Gudra was still on the field, uh, it is naturally faster, as we said, than Conkelda. So if it, if 
Jamie hadn't gone for those Max Phantasms, which were both super effective against yes. Goffitel and lowered the defensive Gudra. Yep. Um, so a little bit of a double, a double bonus there going mm -hmm. on from uh, what Jamie was doing. Uh, but if Nicole was able to keep that Gudra on the field at 2+, plus, if it had access to maybe that Draco Meteor that mm -hmm. most Gudra tend to run, uh, sure. hey, you can use the, you can go to minus special attack when you're already at 2+. plus. <laughs> you're going to do loads of damage, maybe oh, yeah. even get a one-hit knockout on that Kinkelda. Oh, you go back to normal special attack, but you take that every day of the week. Oh, exactly. Um, and so, you know, the way that, the way that Jamie had set that up, um, was uh, really good to really good to see. We're going to have a quick run through of the teams now, just to remind ourselves of what we're going into for this game too, um, and then hopefully get straight down to it. No, yeah, exactly. So I mean, uh, it, it, uh, we do have the Dovetail, Tyranitar, Arcanine, um, uh, Corviknight, Gastrodon, and Gudra. Um, maybe can we be seen Corviknight, or is Corviknight too scared? Maybe because of um, uh, Jamie's um, <laughs> Charizard threat. Charizard, yeah. Well, it could be. I mean, Corviknight would be a great Pokemon to take with the uh, choices that Jamie made. Yes. And especially being able to reflect those Max Phantasm exactly. uh, drops onto back onto the Gengar could be quite important. We're going into game one, game two, turn one now. We have Gengar and that Charizard coming well, out. Oh, there you go. We actually see the Charizard coming out, trying to say hello for this game. Um, we do see the Gothitelle and Gudra lead once again coming out from Nicole's side. Um, I mean, it's going to be... Uh, I think Charizard has multiple options. If it is a Gigantamax Charizard as well, mm. it does really threaten from its G-Max move of G-Max Wildfire, being able to deal consecutive damage for five turns in a row. So being able to kind of whittle down the Grudra potentially, yeah. even if it does try yeah. the Dynamax. So it could be an option. It could be an option as, and as well. It will remove the ability for Goffitel's Focus Sash to be in play as well. So uh, something that Jamie's probably thinking about. And uh, as you say, residual damage onto that Gudra is no pro no no bad thing for Jamie. Uh, Gudra is one of those Pokemon, as we've been mentioning, that's so bulky, uh, takes so many hits, especially on the special side, which Charizard and Gengar tend to be. Um, you know, you, you do want that extra damage, but we are going to see straight away, straight away, I think pretty much every game so far, we've had a Dynamax turn one, and this game is absolutely no different. No different at all. We do actually see the Charizard Gigantamaxing into that ferocious, ferocious uh, silhouette of its own um, uh, from Jamie's side. Are we going to see a Dynamax from Nicole's side? We do, I believe. Um, it's more than likely going to be the Gudra um, because it will try to... Uh, kind of go according to game one being able to try to exert its pressure by mm. being able to uh, boost itself especially attack wise it does have access to um uh, thunder type uh, electric type moves sorry um so it could actually be threatening the charizard at this point too it could be goffitel though going for a protect not wanting to take any damage and we'll see if uh, charizard goes for a g max wildfire yes. uh, to remove that focus sash anyway is it's exactly what we see yes so it actually goes for it. It is able to get that residual damage that you mentioned before, Ben. Um, we do see the Sludge Bomb going into the Gothitelle's Protect, um, uh, quite importantly before. And we uh, eventually see the Gudra retaliating onto Gengar with the use of Max Wormwind. Actually, the Gengar revealing a Focus Sash previously mm. not revealed to. So very interesting um, uh, pl turn of events right there. We do see the Gudra trying to up purely for damage. It did recognize, listen, that game that can actually be a problem um, uh, to my team, to my Gothitelle, more importantly. Exactly. And that Gothitelle, now that its Focus Sash is broken, it's taken some damage from that G-Max Wildfire uh, and the residual damage from from uh, the secondary effect of G-Max Wildfire. Yes. Probably going to be in Shadow Ball range and definitely doesn't want to take that, Does so it's not. leaving the field. Yeah, definitely leaving the field in uh, favor of Tyranitar, which will be able to um, uh, honestly resist the any ghost type moves coming out from Gengar's side. Um, we do see a Shadow Ball coming out from Gengar into the once before Gothel's slot, which is now the Tyranitar. Honestly, being able to shrug it off like it's nothing. We actually see a max <laughs> overgrowth <laughs> from the Charizard into the Tyranitar, potentially thinking, well, listen, there might be a chance that maybe a Tyranitar or even for some reason a Gastrodon behind uh, would switch in. He just wanted to cover his plays, I do believe there. But in actual, uh, whether it's in a good way or a bad way right now for him, Nicole does reveal the weakness policy on the Tyranitar being able to get that plus two in special attack and attack. 
and we do see a Max Ooze coming out from Drudra being able to pick off the Dango, which was previously at 1 HP, um, whilst being able to boost its own special attack. But maybe, just like you mentioned earlier, there is a fact, there is a chance that it could be a mixed Tyranitar, perhaps, mm. and it might actually be boosting as part of the strategy, its special attack. It certainly could be, and uh, a little bit maybe of a missed opportunity there for Nicole, uh, targeting into Gengar with that Max Ooze. Mm. Well, Gengar was on 1 HP, and Tyranitar came onto the field, activating that Sandstream ability. So uh, Sandstorm would have been able to pick up the knockout on Gengar uh, before, um, uh, regardless of whether Gengar was attacked or not. So maybe Nicole expecting a switch out there from uh, Gengar into something like this Grimmsnarl that's just entered the field on Jamie's side um, and trying to cover that switch. Obviously, you know, it's always a good thing that uh, you get those max ooze, ooze boosts from uh, Nicole's side of the field. And certainly, if at the very least you're boosting Gudra, uh, something that you really like to see. No, yeah, definitely. I, I do completely agree with you. Um, uh, it, I, I do think that right now you were very correct about the Sandstorm being able to chip away. Um, it could have been a read to be honest, just like you did mention. Mm. But um, we are actually seeing the Tyranitar completely getting, uh, not caring that it did have the weakness policy proc, swapping out for Dothatel instead. We do see the Max Overgrowth once again coming out from the uh, Gigantamax Charizard side, not being able to pick up the KO, being able to deal some still solid damage. And we do see a Max Ooze once again mm. coming out from the Druja, nearly picking up the KO, not quite just enough. Um, but it is actually still just on the road to boosting itself up whilst dealing a lot of damage. But in retaliation, we actually see Spirit Break coming out from the Grim Snarl, being able to say, hey, it's not time for you to special up. It's special downtime now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> actually being able to get some quite good damage off on the Gudra, to be honest. Yeah, Gudra is not known for its physical defense. And uh, I really like the play there from Nicole bringing the Tyranitar uh, away from the field, bringing that, uh, bringing that Gothitelle back in. Even though it's going to take a lot of damage, uh, not going to be able to pick up the knockout with that residual damage from GMAX Wildfire. And something that you mentioned there, Costa, about you know having the weakness policy but not going to be able to use it. Well, uh, you definitely can't use a weakness policy see if your Pokemon's KO'd. No. Uh, so <laughs> definitely the right play there for Nicole, deciding that Tyranitar was more important than Gothitel in this matchup, uh, maybe to be able to deal with that uh, uh, Charizard, now not in its Gigantamax form. Usually, Max Overgrowth comes off something like Solar, uh, Solar Beam, yes. and Solar Beam only works when you're in the sun. So, exactly. uh, you know, really clever play there from Nicole being able to remove that Tyranitar and the threat of Solar Beam or a grass type attack coming out from that Charizard to uh, preserve it for the late game. No, definitely. I, I do think that um, what Nicole does have to potentially look out for is the Contelda in the back. Yes, you are able to preserve the Tyranitar just fine, which is absolutely mm. great, but you do still have to fear the Contelda being in the back potentially being able to get rid of the Tyranitar. We do actually see Fake Out coming out from the Gothitelle into the Charizard slot, being able to flinch it for the turn, and we see a Fake Tears reveal coming out from Grimmsnarl onto Gudra, whilst uh, Gudra is able to pick up the KO in retaliation with its Sludge Bomb, uh, just completely taking out Grimmsnarl. But I think Grimmsnarl did its job, kind of, or at least mm. its intended job of being able to reduce Fake Tears just enough Potentially, the Charizard being able to pick up the KO thanks to the residual damage of GMAX Wafa next turn. Exactly, as we see the Gothitelle coming, going down to the last turn of Gigantamax Wildfire's effect. Um, so, uh, both players deciding on what they're going to bring in. We'll see if Conkeldor comes in from Jamie and uh, Nicole has two Pokemon left in the back. So, we'll see which one she opts for. Maybe it's the Corviknight, but maybe Ooh. it's, in fact, the Arcanine coming onto the field. Um, now that we've got this uh, position, Jamie uh, isn't able to switch anymore. So that Gothitelle uh, definitely done its job. Uh, Intimidate from the Arcanine coming out. And now uh, Nicole's got to decide if that two minus special defense on Gudra is going to really make a difference uh, to what she's planning. Uh, maybe the Arcanine even comes back out and comes back in to further reduce the attack of that Kinkelda. So we've got a little bit of uh, quite a lot of options to carry on with through the last turns of these game, this game. But the crucial question is, is how is Nicole going to be able to knock out this Charizard? And we do actually see the Gudra in fear of it being KO'd. Uh, swap out and Tyranitar now taking its place. A Flare Blitz coming out from the Arcanine. 
onto the Conkelda slot, being able to deal good damage, but maybe not so quite enough. Um, we do actually see Ooh. a Blast Burn coming from the Charizard, not being able to take out the Tyranitar, switch in, and a Drain Punch coming out from the Conkelda, being able to deal nearly ha half HP from the Arcanine, even with the Intimidate um, uh, uh, ability being uh, able to take out its... Uh, reduce its attack by one stage, but more crucially being able to restore its HP as well. And talking about restoring HP, we do see the Arcanine restoring thanks to its Citrus Berry as well. Exactly, exactly. So a great switch in there for Nicole, uh, bringing in that Tyranitar that took almost no damage from that <laughs> Blast Burn. Uh, Charizard using that move isn't going to be able to move this turn. So, uh, you know, Nicole is able to maybe focus down into that Conkelda without risk of any more damage coming out from that Charizard. Uh, you know, the Tyranitar on Nicole's side of the field is going to have to be preserved. And after seeing that damage coming out from uh, the Blast Burn on uh, Jamie's side of the field, likely that if Tyranitar is able to be removed and preserved for the upcoming turns, make sure that, you know, Nicole's got that one-on-one -on -one against that uh, Charizard in the end game. Uh, she might be able to clean up this game. Talking about preservation of Fantastical Beasts, we do see the Tyranitar <laughs> showing the Protect, trying to preserve itself oh, uh, against that Contelda. The Flare Blitz does come out from the Arcanine into the Contelda, dealing a lot of damage, and wow, we see the close combat reveal from Contelda actually being able to take out the Arcanine in this case, really putting a tough, tough uh, position onto Nicole's side. It is indeed, but you know, that Gudra in the back uh, is... <laughs> is still potentially going to be able to do some work. Uh, Kinkelda is going to have to choose which slot it targets. Uh, we have got that uh, sandstorm being removed from the field as well as the grassy terrain. So uh, Tyranitar is going to take a little bit more from those special attacks coming out from Charizard now. Um, but really, the question is, you know, you've got two really strong, specially defensive Pokemon, both at low HP. Which one is the Conkelda going to target? Uh, you know, Tyranitar's just protected, yep. uh, but, Jay, uh, but Nicole has the option to go for that double protect. Uh, and it may be the thing that Nicole needs to just uh, work her way through to the end of this game. It does, and it, it's quite, um, I do think that's quite tough because speed control wise, Charizard will pro li most likely move <laughs> first as well. And just like you mentioned, the double protect does come out from Tyranitar, and it is successful. Mac Punch completely negated. And we see a hurricane reveal from the Charizard on Jamie's side, being able to successfully take out that Rudra, um, being able to naturally be at a uh, higher speed uh, stat advantage compared to it being able to take out the kill. And most importantly, um, the hurricane hit, to be honest. Well, a, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Hurricane, not known for being the most accurate move, and uh, Nicole forfeiting that match, yeah. knowing that uh, Kinkelda versus Tyranitar, the Kinkelda's <laughs> coming out on top. No, yeah, because it's uh, really tough. I think it was very tough um, on Nicole's side having to try to uh, play around the play of Kinkelda being the threat to a Tyranitar, whilst her Tyranitar is the threat to Jamie's Charizard. So it was really about trying to carefully board position yourself. Mm. Uh, we could have potentially seen Tyranitar come out for Grudra in thought of maybe I could try to get sand up, maybe uh, maybe I could try to preserve it somehow. But in the end of the day, like you said, um, going for the double protect was solid. She was able to actually get it, yeah. which is really, yeah. really cool. Uh, you know, you've, you've got to play for those outs. You've got to make yeah. sure that you're doing everything that you can to win these games. But going into game two, what do you think that Nicole may be able to adjust? Uh, going, or game no, that's it. That's Jamie's it. won. Jamie's, Jamie's won. won. Set. Sorry, I'm a game behind, guys. Uh, all the excitement. I was thinking, yes, we're going to have another one. Uh, no, we're not. No, um, we're not. No, we are Jamie's done. actually able to pick up the set. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like it could have... It still it was one of those games that were so intense. It could have gone either way. Stop smiling. It could have gone either way, dependent on how um, the board positioning was placed. But I think Jamie did really well in understanding that his Charles it needs to be protected. How can it be protected yeah. against Tyranitar? Contelda. Contelda yeah. will yeah. be able to put in the damage. It has that priority uh, through the use of Mac Punch. It does have um, a uh, Drain Punch being able to restore its HP whilst being able to deal loads of damage because of its Flame Orb, Guts Boost, and also having close combat, which was, um, to be honest, it was quite interesting and strong to see it being able to take out Arcanine.
Yeah, because Arcanine and, was above half HP, wasn't it? It, it was, and yeah. we saw the amount of damage that Drain Punch did previously. So yes. having those different options of fighting moves, we saw Drain Punch, uh, Close Combat, and Mac Punch yes. from that Conkelda. So, you know, lots of different options for lots of different scenarios, and that's, that's exactly what... Uh, Jamie needed because he used all three of them in that match. So yes. uh, absolute props. Uh, I will say, you know, the, the Gudra was looking so good. It was. Both games that we saw there it right was. at the start, getting itself boosted up. Um, and it was just, it just didn't quite get the traction that it needed to finish off the games and really punch through in the way that you'd want it to. My heart's dropped a bit for Gudra, to be yeah. honest, because I was, I was really, I, I was hoping that maybe I had coverage to try to be able to, deal with the Charizard if it had like let's say access to a Max Lightning uh, in the form of Thunderbolt for example because we did see it was opting more for special attack um, boosts uh, through the mm. use of Max Ooze. Um, it could have honestly put a lot of threat onto the Charizard. I think Jamie was kind of scouting a bit as well to yeah. see is there going to be a reveal of Max Lightning from Gudra or not. Unfortunately we didn't see it. It could have helped potentially but then again you know that's how the game plays out. To be honest. It is how the game plays out and you only get one one chance in these these tournaments yes. uh, in each one of the Swiss rounds. Uh, speaking of the, the rounds we are going to go to a short break and we will be back very soon with your winner from this round Jamie Boyd.
Pokemon 2020 Malmo Regional Championships. And we are here with the winner of that last round, myself. Jamie Boy, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Jamie stealing the thunder there, uh, going from being behind the desk in Bochum to uh, the other side and being a player uh, in this tournament. Jamie, we know that you are already have your day one invite locked up Ooh, and ready to go quite. for... I'm only, not I'm quite. Still, I'm 20 points away. 20 I'm points away. 20 points plan. away. Yeah. So going to be getting it this weekend, hopefully. Um, but, you know... Going from day one, uh, day two uh, to day two, potentially, we have the World Championships in London this year. Are you going to be going full steam for that day two invitation? Absolutely. I, 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 I was going to probably take this a bit of uh, this season off because of uh, going into my new career. But when I saw that it was London, I knew I had to go full steam ahead for, for this invite and make sure I get that day two as well. Yeah, indeed. And w what a way to start off this tournament. And actually, speaking of this tournament, uh, a couple of years ago, you were the actual champion of uh, of the event. So uh, trying to win back that trophy, I'm assuming. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's really many people that have actually defended the regional championship before. I think it's, yeah. it's happened a couple of times in the US, but it's not not many. And I, I want I want that accolade. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, all the best to you for that. Uh, but we're going to go straight back into the game, and that was such a fun set to uh, cast and watch. Nicole is an absolutely fantastic player. Um, but you really managed to keep yourself on the front foot, even against uh, some more niche threats like that Gudra coming out there from Nicole's side of the field. What was your approach to dealing with that when you saw it in team preview? I was thinking that I was like initially I was going to go Max Phantasm, drop its defenses, and then just hit it with one of my physical attackers at one point. But then the Max Uses put a stop to Grimmsnarl being able to do that. So that became a bit more awkward. And yeah, that, that, it, it, increasing its special attack was, made it a huge threat because I can't really do any damage. I think you saw one of my attacks do like 10% to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think, I think it was in game one. It was like, oh, the Sandstorm's done a little bit more damage there to the Gudra than that, uh, that attack that Jamie uh, launched out there. Um, and, and you know this is the this is the thing, isn't it? For those players at home, you've got to you've got to know these Pokemon that you're up against and know how best to defeat them. And that's a great example of how you do that. Um, but speaking of other threats, that Charizard did so much work for you uh, across both games. Uh, but it was always under a little bit of threat from that Tyranitar. Yeah, I had to, I had to make sure that I was like catching the switch of the Tyranitar. I, I I had the Gothitelle pin with the with the Shadow Ball, so it was a reasonably comfortable max overgrowth. Um, into that Gothitelle slot. I, I don't think the, go the Gothitelle would have... I, I think the Gothitelle would have survived the Shadow Ball, so Max Overgrowth would have picked up that tiny bit. I was a bit concerned of KOing it and then activating a Sap Zipper on the Gudra, and then it would turn out to have some physical moves. Like, it had, yeah, a, had a yeah, random Rock yeah, Slide and yeah. KO'd my Charizard. That would have been a bit awkward, but um, yeah, being able to cover the switch to the Tyranitar, that meant that Tyranitar was never able to get a Rock Slide onto my Charizard. Yeah, exactly, and we saw that game two, I think it was, that the, the Tyranitar came in, you activated that weakness policy, which is always something that players in VGC in this format have to be worried about on Tyranitar. Uh, and then it switched straight back out again, so definitely putting the pressure on there. Um, just a quick uh, word to all of the players out there that may be newer to VGC. Uh, you've been playing for quite a while now and got quite a lot of titles under your belt. Uh, what, what do you think is the best way for players to get started and maybe start building their teams? I think I can point to the team I'm using in this tournament really well to give some advice for that. I would say it's fine to start with what is considered to be like the best Pokemon, the standard meta. And what I've done is I've taken a team that was like a, a, a legit team that had been coming from Series 2 and Series 3. I think it's still about the same. But then I put my own twists on it. Like mm. I, I don't think I've ever seen a Gengar on the Inteleon um, kind of teams before. And that's been a really good ch uh, fit for it as well. Like the Charizards, I put some twists onto the, the actual Pokemon themselves. So like... If you want to get into it, it's very, it's very, very good idea to start with the standard, but then put your own spin onto your own teams, and you'll get a flavour of of what actually works for you. Yeah, and sometimes you've got to start with the things. Look up what works, and there's so many resources out there, uh, especially Pokemon.com forward slash strategy. Uh, check that out if you haven't already. Um, there's lots of uh, resources on there that you can use to maybe see what what players have been using already, and then as you say, Jamie, uh, just try and build off that and uh, and work with what you know um, and practice with that going forward. So uh, brilliant. Well done, Jamie. Free and O now. Good luck for the rest of your rounds. Uh, we are going to take a short break and we will be back with the finals from the seniors division.